Hello YouTube, it is Damien. It is the BVB rebuild. It is the Europa League semi-final versus this year's Real Life Champions in Villarreal. We do have a pretty tough semi-final to get there. This is obviously a team with quality in the Europa League as they did win it in real life. However, it is Football Manager. The fact that Football Manager has predicted Roma and Villarreal in the semi-finals, I did that in real life, kind of shows this game is a pretty good simulation. Um, since we last saw, seen each other, I have officially wrapped up the title. As you can see, we beat Schalke 4-1. We beat Freiburg in the semi-final 4-0. But on that same day, we played Schalke buy-in. Lost the game 1 0. Can't remember who it was to now. I've just come home from work. Um, to Osberg, and that sealed us the title. Um, a pretty poor year from Bayern standards. You know, they're usually very dominant in, um, in Germany. And if I take my camera off, they've lost five games this year. Usually, that's probably the amount of games that they would have lost throughout two seasons. Um, they lost to Osberg, they lost to Hamburg, they lost to Wolfsburg, they lost to Bayern at A4, and they lost to us. Um, an interesting note, no. Uh, Mocha and Gladbach, no Leipzig in that. Leipzig, by the way, you know, it's still pretty tight for the top four, but Leipzig look like they're going to miss out all together on um, Euro European Champions League football. Um, and something maybe to keep an eye on. Um, there's only one game to go, so they are out, aren't they? Yeah, there we go. I just realised it's 31 play, not 30. Um, anyhow, in terms of us, we've been in really good form in the semi-final. We'll recap it quickly. Didn't give it to you because we got Freiburg. If it was Leipzig or Bayern in the semi, 100%. We played... I wouldn't say we play well, but we were clinical. And if you're clinical, you're winning games of football. Um, and we also didn't concede, and you'll win games of football like that too. Probably um, Katko's best performance since being back on the save as well. Uh, Balbosa went ballistic. Uh, Haaland found a way. Reina scored a very nice goal. It was a pretty good day out for the boys, and I was really happy. Um, Wolfsburg, we did win 3-0. But more importantly, for my good friend Jaden, who does love Royce and has been texting me about how good it is to have BVB back. It's one of his... Things that he watches on YouTube. Jaden, this one's for you. Royce has hit another free kick. And this one's better than the last one. So uh, where the first one kind of went straight at the keeper, this one here did what it needed to do. From behind the goal, around the wall, inside of the post and in. That was probably a touch quick for you. We'll go back the uh, allotted time that needed to be go here. Um, we'll do that. And if we pause that and just go a little bit slower... We can see Royce and all his goodness around the wall with the band inside of the post and in. Pick that out, goalkeeper. You're not. We win and we are through as champions and we're obviously through to the final of the side bank. Pocklian. Anyhow, Villarreal is a team that we will talk about here for a little bit. They've got Pau Torres who um, is going to go away with the Euros. I think he's going to be quite the player for Spain in real life in the Euros. We did just do the European um, the preview, the Euro preview on the podcast. Links down below. Time you see this episode, it should be pretty close to seeing um, um, the, the start of the competition as well. We recapped every group, what we think will happen, and we put in our early predictions about who would win the tournament and who will go deep. Villarreal currently sit fifth in the in La Liga. A lot different to what happened in real life. They have to win to have Champions League football, European football in general. Um, against United, and it kind of showed their desperation, their will to not concede and everything like that, to be in a position here. They're already guaranteed that they're going to be in the Europa League next year. Uh, I think that was a big factor in how dogged in the performance they gave against United. I also think United did screw that final. If you listen to the podcast, you would know. Um, I'm not going to speak about that too much, but you would know my thoughts on that game of football. And I did predict Villarreal to win it too. Um, but here on Football Manager, I expect this team to do really well. In terms of the team itself, I have, um, I have rotated, as you would expect, before this game, um, mainly because... You just don't want to go in underdone. You've got a game that doesn't mean anything, so you may as well have rotated. Um, and as you can see, we are building back towards the full side here. And there we go. Collins is somehow still on the bench. Made a mistake here. Where is Garcia? He's there. I have left one out. Munier, that's the one. Don't know how that happened, but there we go. Anyhow, if you look at the team, everyone pretty good. Um, I will get Sancho in over Royce. Sorry, Marco. But um, you've got to remember, three stars are leading Bundesliga player, and if you're over three, three and a half to four star, you're pretty um, star slash world class, and if you're five star, you are world class, like Haaland is. Still wanted, by the way, by Chelsea, Liverpool, and they're getting upwards of, like, saying in the papers, 140 million 
if they gave me 200 million, I probably would sell and just spend it all um, to try and win the Champions League. And saying that, you can't get better than this boy, I don't think, up front this year on Football Manager. Anyway, Kat Kerr in goals with Gabriel Menino at right back. Stones, Hummels, Guerrero, Reyna, Emre Chan, Ceballos, Sancho, Haaland, and Gabriel Barbosa. Your bench is George, Makoku, Bellingham, Royce, Garcia, and Munier. All I'm going to say is that the only thing that doesn't play into our hands here is the fact that we are at home first. I'd rather play away from home first, mainly because you know if you've got the away goal or not and how aggressive you want to be at home. Here for us, it's nearly as important to not concede as it is to win the game. Uh, I still think we're going to be good enough to win the game, and we'll definitely have a look at the Villarreal side for the first leg. As the voice goes a little bit there, I don't know what happened there, for the first leg, and we'll compare it to the second leg as well. Last but not least, fresh cut for Damo. Do you rate it? Let me know in the comment section below. Rulli is in goal. Pretty good keep. I've used him before. He's a pretty star-studded man. He used to grow a little bit more than what he does now, but still pretty good. Um, Gaspar is the one we have to get out. Um, Patrick's a pretty decent centre-back, with Torres being the better of the two, um, and probably will have the job on Haaland. Um, I actually think Perez is, is a very good fullback, very experienced with international football. Parejo there with Abora as well. And where Abora is very slow, he's very experienced. He sits there and he just does what he has to do, which is to tackle everything that comes through the middle. Uh, Manu looks pretty decent as well, but also quite experienced. Jared and Reina playing on the right, which is good for us as well. Um, Alex Benar, the uh, wonder kid on the left-hand side, and um, and Alsa up top. Good little player as well, knows how to finish a chance. There's their bench there, including Mo Gomez um, and Sergio Sen uh, Asenso, who's also a pretty decent keeper. Uh, I think that's pretty close to full strength. I would have been playing uh, Gabriel Moreno probably through the middle, um, and then it would have been a question of, you know, who do you really throw on the right-hand side? And I don't think there's much. I probably would have played um, Samari here as well and maybe pushed... I don't know. Would you have maybe pushed one of these boys on? No, I wouldn't have either. I don't know. I feel like they're very midfield, centre midfield heavy, and they lack the winger. Um, and hence why Gabriel Moreno is probably playing out wide. Are, are they missing anybody? Is there a big name that I've forgotten that they're missing? Uh, we'll have a look. Coquelin through the middle of the park, which is probably a good miss for us because he's defensively very, mo very, very mindful. Anyhow, um, I'm confident. We'll see what we can do. It's a fantastic occasion, and we are underway and I think in the form that we're in, we should be looking to win this game and win this game well and then play the second leg according to how this goes. I think we stay on the front foot. Uh, I think we would rather win this game 4-1, 3-1 than we would 1-0 uh, because I can see them beating us 1-0 over in Spain. Uh, this is a game where we have to make this home advantage count. I just hate playing at home first because nil-nil Villarreal will take. Nil-nil is not the worst result for us either, but it does put a lot of pressure on us to score in Spain. Anyway, 15 minutes to go on and a very, uh, I think a very lackluster game. Uh, looks like they're going to set up pretty defensively deep and we're going to struggle to break it down. And they're keeping the ball very well for a team away from home as well. At the minute though, I think this is all about who finds the first goal. If we can find a goal, then we're going to be in a very good spot to hopefully go out and do the job. 45 minutes approaching, no highlight in the first half and... Well, that was the most boring highlightless half that we've seen on FM this season, isn't it? And we go into the second half. Now, it's going to be a question who wants to go at it and who doesn't. <laughs> For me, I was at a point at SFB in West Ham where he had a game like this in a knockout game and we didn't make a change. I'm going to make one change early, but I don't think I'm going to change the system only because if it does finish as nil-nil, I do expect... Villarreal to come out a little bit more in Spain, and I think that's going to give the room for Haaland and Barbosa to score. So I am going to stay the same way. I am also going to bring Makoku in for Barbosa. I am just going to go slightly more direct. Only because, and I will play for a set piece, only because if we can move that ball a little bit quicker into the final third, we might unsettle them just a touch as we go and try and find a winner, but I'm going to keep the balance of the team the same. That might be a little bit... Oh, they've gone very defensive. With that in mind, do I want to do it? I'm going to go like so and get Makoka's inside forward. I'm actually going to go and focus us down there on the right-hand side. Be a touch more expressive. 
You get Makoku coming in, helping out Harlan and K. George, and Gabriel Munino going as well. See how we go here. We've not long left. Doesn't look like there's going to be a highlight, does there? Yeah, very. I think that's a game that Villarreal would have loved. Uh, we look for me that was not the greatest, obviously, because new new no highlights. Great, what, what was there to commentate? Um, but it's not the worst. Like we should back ourselves in against Villarreal to score in Spain. We should with our score goal scoring talent. I think that it's a game that both teams would take. For me, I can see more chance of us finishing a game 1-1 in Spain, 2-2, us winning in Spain, being a goal threat, then I do see us losing a game 3-2, 2-1. What it does bring in is the one nil FMing or the one nil they sit there, they score early and they sit in part of the bus and we don't score. But I also think Villarreal literally came here and just sat 10 men behind the ball, kept the ball very well, but never really went forward. You can tell, they had an expected goal ratio of 0.1. Um, so, yeah, not a great game, pretty boring game, but I think in your big, big, big uh, ties in Europe, and something I've been doing a little bit more in Denmark is not getting caught in the moment going gun ho I've done that a few times in Denmark, especially in away ties, where I'm like, I need the away goal, and you only one nil down, and then you cop three or four, and I have done it in Denmark before, where I've gone gun ho and the opposition's found the away goal at nil nil, and then you're really up against it. Um, this year in the Champions League in SFB, I did something similar where I stayed in the same system, finished nil-nil against West Ham, and we got a little bit unlucky against West Ham where we missed about a few guild edge chances, lost the game 2-1, and had a disallowed goal in the 94th minute to get through. Here, with the quality that we have, unlike my SFB side, I expect us to go through still, because I expect us to beat Villarreal in Spain or get a goal-scoring draw, um, which makes my decision here not to make a change, not to go maybe for... 3-1-2 uh, or a 4-2-3-1, but really aggressive with the wing-backs going with the inside forwards because nil nil is not the worst result there. I think that, yeah, I'm going to tell him it wasn't good enough. It puts it all on the line. Um, all I don't want to see is happen is nil nil, no highlight, 120 minutes over there, no goals, penalties. And then I'm going to have heart pop which is also important enough. Salzburg beat Rome 3 nil in Germany, and it could be an all-German final. Anyway, from Damo, that's the end of the first leg. I'll see you guys in a second. I believe it is after the 32nd game here in the Bundesliga, and that will be our season done. Is it 32 or 34? I think it's 32 in the Bundesliga. It might be 34. Uh, 32, because it's 18 teams. You don't play each other twice. Yeah, it's 32, isn't it? My math is correct. I'm going to double-check that now. I'm like, like almost sure. 34, never mind. It is 34. Okay, never mind. I thought it was 32 for whatever reason. Um, does mean that my math is a shit. For a guy that did year 12 and plays poker and can calculate pods like that, couldn't work out that it was 34 games, not 32 in the Bundesliga. Anyhow, it um, does mean Leipzig do have a chance to get through here, but they may need to win the Europa League to get Champions League football. And that's not good for us in the final, but it also is very important that we have a very good record against Leipzig and we also have them in the final. So uh, lucky last episode of this season could be a Leipzig doubleheader in both finals of the side by Pockley and, and the Europa League. Hopefully it will be, but if it isn't, it's because we've had ourselves the blame and we didn't do the job in Spain against Villarreal. I'll see you for that tie there in a second. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to YouTube to episode 10 of the BBB Rebuild. I think you can tell by the fact that I have less hair on my head that it is a different day that I'm filming. I'm just going to say after filming the first leg of the semi, um, I had to go pick up a few things to start a new job. Um, throughout the week and that has caused me to work some full-time hours and I have not been able to film this game I went out did some shopping had to get some stuff for work obviously and then I had uh, You know coaching on the Monday uh, and then pretty much I just film and do Dortmund stuff on the Monday I would have found time for the semi-final if I was working my normal hours, but full-time hours dictate I haven't been able to and we've been playing a, he a heap of SFB links down below Second thing I will say this episode will be coming out today as well We'll probably will be editing it and getting it straight out on the Monday because it's generally Monday is the day for the BVB uploads um, I will say we do have a absolutely amazing podcast um, planned for tonight So I do have the links down below to that and if you haven't seen obviously the preview to the Euros You would know that I've got absolutely everything wrong so far except that I predicted Pandev would score and the whole of the world of football would go into disarray and it'd be the biggest moment of the Euros. He scored, and I do think that might be the biggest moment, like this is in the good moment of the Euros. Anyway, if 
you haven't remembered what was going on, which I, you will, because it's just like that, I haven't, because I haven't played the save in a week. Um, we did draw new new in a very, very, very boring game against Villarreal at home. Um, like I said at the end of the last uh, part, which I do remember saying, it was a game where I do back us to score in Spain, so I didn't change it and go ballistic, because I think it would be very detrimental to go like the full one three to get caught one on the break. Um, and lose the game 1 0, where new and new, I back us to score, probably win in 90 anyway um, against Villarreal in Spain. Um, in terms of the game in the middle, we did play uh, Word of Brandon this morning, my morning coffee, um, and we did obviously win 3 0 and look really, really good. Apart from all of that, there's not much going on. In comparison to my SFB save, this save's just kind of been a very cruisy, just keep going. This is the only real moment of any sort of danger or, you know, uh, you know, drama, um, where with our SFB, everything is going on, and I highly recommend you check it out on the Twitch down below, or obviously on the YouTube if you can't get around to the Twitch. Um, obviously, we are going to switch back in to the full strength side. Uh, where is Emre Chan? There is Emre Chan, and Menino is going to come back in, and we are going to go unchanged from the team that did win, a, did win, sorry, Unchanged from the team that did draw to Villarreal and make a couple changes to the team that did beat Werner Bremen on the weekend because we obviously rotated for this game here. I look at that team and I look, that looks like a team that should be winning the Europa League and I look at that team and go, we should be beating Villarreal, we should have beat them at home and we should beat them in Spain. Um, Kat Curran goals, Menino Stone, Hummels, Guerrero, Reina, Emre Chan, Ballos, Sancho, Haaland and Barbosa. And you could imagine that that team there would make up majority of the players that will play in the Champions League next season. Important to note, we do have 125 million in the transfer budget, and that does mean we could could go ballistic in what could be our last season here in this save. Considering I only play the save every uh, Monday as Paul goes live, you know that name right there, Paulie29. Instead of an M, put two Ys. That that guy on YouTube, Twitch, doing an unreal save in Belgium. Get around him. Um, we are going to um, go and just pray to the boys and tell them, look. You're 90 minutes away from a final, a final that you should be making and should be winning. Um, you're, you won the league in in, um, in Germany. Let's go win the cup and let's go win the, the uh, let's go win the Europa League. And to be fair, I think we could play Leipzig in all competitions um, as well, still remaining. I think they we got them in the final, the Saibad Poklin, and I'm pretty sure they're up in their tie anyway. I can't remember. Um, of course, he's going to be an important um, with the leading scorers in the Euro. Well, hopefully that means we win. We will note for the final, we will be playing in 3D. Um, whenever I play a save in 2D, I always make finals in 3D. Obviously, we play in 3D in all of my other saves apart from this, but because this is offline and I like playing in 2D personally, there we are. Saying that, I'm really happy with the camera angle we found in the vertical scrolling, um, in which you'll see in the 3D game. Um, I think that's an absolute amazing camera angle and the best one we've had. Uh, that is way too quick because I was trying to get to this game because, Paul, we just went on Football Manager, wants to go to the driving range, and I am very keen. Haaland's ball in, cleared away, but only as far as John Stones, and he puts one out to Sancho. And Sancho now can drive it a man. Doesn't win the ball, but uh, doesn't beat his man, but we win it back, and Ceballos won Sancho again. And an early goal for us would settle the nerves. An early goal for them would make my nerves jangle and that things could get very loud in the Aloy household. Anyway, Cochrane now, down this left-hand side. I've just given it away inexplicably in the middle of the park, but Katka has, um, Katka, yeah, Katka is his first name, has picked it up and he's gone long towards Sancho. Uh, he's flicked it on to no one in particular. A very interesting highlight. A highlight that's gone for so long and it's a mistake and Sancho's in. He has Haaland on the cut back. He looks for him and Haaland pops it in and Villarreal shot themselves in the foot. I don't know who it was. It might have been Pau Torres that went across and just decided to inexplicably give the ball to Sancho. And yeah, for a world-class centre-back to try and take on your man in the last line of defence there, you're not really world-class, are you? Anyway, and Haaland doesn't miss. Surprise it wasn't blocked. If you know with me and SFB, that would have been blocked. But um, here with Dortmund, Haaland doesn't miss because he's Haaland. And it is 1-0. And as you, you know, as I said, an early goal for us would be amazing. And I did back us to score in Spain, and I'm vindicated for not changing the system and staying at 0-0 in the first leg when push came to shove. Gabriel Barbosa goes for goal and fires over. A second one would probably see us through no matter what, because I only see Villarreal really scoring two. Mario Gaspar, Gaspar puts a ball in, only as far as Jeremy Pino, and it should have been one all. And there we go, only should have been one all. I'm Fortunately for us, it's flown over. And that's probably what's cost Villarreal in this tie because they had a couple of chances in the first leg to get an away goal. And if that did, that would have opened us up and who knows, they could have scored two and really put us on the back foot here. At the moment, though, we're bossing this game in Spain. We've got the goal mercifully, which is good as well. And look, barring Villarreal finding something from nothing, scoring two, we are through. 
And you would say there's more chance of us scoring than them at the minute with how this game is being played out. No real highlight to speak of into the half time as well, but look, nothing really to be changed. You know, we're dominating the ball, we're dominating chances, we're dominating everything, but, you know, n- but nothing really. And he said, in saying that, early corner for them, and Cochrane picks it up again. The player that knows how to pick up the ball a lot, but he's given it away, and Emre Chan, we're on the break, a second would see us through to the final, and Emre Chan down this left hand side, surely you're going to swing a balling bud. In the end, he never does. Still has it, finds Rayner. He out to Emre Chan. Back into Rayner. Hit that, buddy. Oh, what a finish. Could be our goal of the year. He's opened his body up. He's potted into the top bins. And if it wasn't so early in the Alloy household, I would be going ballistic. But it is early, and we'll give everyone's ears a rest. We're 2-0 up in a semi-final, and we're going through to the final. It's as simple as that. Rayner opens his body. He's a bit of a wonder kid, and he just side foots that one into the far bin. You're not saving that. We're 2-0 up, and that is us through to the Europa League final. It got nervy for a little bit because, obviously... You know, new and ill first first leg at home. You always get a little nervy. But this Villarreal side, unlike in real life, have not been able to hold on and not and keep a clean sheet. And we have gone ballistic and scored two. And I tell you what, Emre Chan on it again. It could be three as they're going to come out and they need to score a few. Saying that, though, they've got numbers on the break. And Arian Pino is wanting that and he's in and he's quick. And a goal for Villarreal would give him a slight little chance. And I tell you what, it was not far away. Capco probably beat on the on the chip, but we obviously make do, and it is two. Um, apparently, Guerrero's not fit. Sure, we get Garcia out there. Reynolds obviously not fit. Just for you, Jaden, Marco, Royce, um, and I am going to get out there as well. Um, uh, Danny Sabalos will come off, and we'll get Jude Bellingham on, who did play for England last night in the Euros, which was nice. It was a dead boring game, though, wasn't that against Croatia? And, uh, well, look, they scored, they won. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, 80 minutes played. 2-0, it's coming home, but to the non-war football, Italy winning this Euros, that is the prediction. Anyhow, Kat Kerr, bull, goes in towards Sancho, back into Gabriel Menino. Could we make it 3-0, give us a party piece to get out of Spain, and we can go club and, you know, all the sort of things. Haaland would score, chips it, yeah, good finish. Boys, let's get on the party bar, so we're making a final, you know, we've already won the league, so let's just get on an absolute bender, and we're 3-0 up, and that's what I'd say as a coach, let's just go and get on a bender, we made the final, everyone relax, we've won the, we've won the league. Take a week or whatever off. I'll play the kids in the last couple of league games and then focus on the final of the Cybank Pocklin and the final of the Europa League. Keeper came out and did the right thing, but Haaland is just Haaland and I ain't selling him in this save, that's for sure. And it's 3-0 and we are good. We're checking for offside. He never was off, was he? It was a bit tighter than I thought, but yeah, not off. Um, and in the end, it's 3-0. It's all she wrote. We still have a highlight to go here. Mario Gaspar with a ball down this right-hand side. I would love to keep a clean sheet if that is possible too, FM. Um, Cochrane now, Royce presses, ball in, decent, Benner heads, yeah, we can't keep clean sheets, we never do. Unless we're playing against someone hopeless, uh, we never keep clean sheets at all. If you did hear the cat meowing in the background, do apologise, but Louis likes to make himself known, um, and the stream knows that, and you guys now know that on YouTube as well. Great header anyway from Banner, or Benner, or whatever you say, but there you go, it is 3-1, it's all she wrote, we are through to the final of the Europa League. And barring, you know, something crazy, we should be having an all-German final in both the Europa League. I was going to say both the Europa League and Cybert Pocklin. Cybert Pocklin can only be German, Damien. Um, but yeah, Salzburg obviously holding on for a new and new there against Roma, but a 3 new win overall. And we do get our counterparts in, you know, we do get our, carnival, our counterparts. No, we don't. That's our Austrian Salzburg. Sorry, I apologise. Oh, I swear it was the German... Okay, that's the problem when you don't play the safe for a, for a year. I thought it was Leipzig. Honestly, thought it was Leipzig in the final. It's not. Wow. What run have you gone on? I was even saying Salzburg and it didn't even click to me. I do apologise. Where's my coffee? Wake up, son. Wake up. How the fuck have you done that, boys? Good luck to you. How have you gone in the Europa League? Surely you're top of the Austrian Premier. He is. How, how have you gone in the Europa League? So in the Champions League, they got knocked out by Dynamo, went to the Europa League, got through Group B. They actually got a pretty easy group. Beat Anderlecht one new home and away. Got Spurs and beat Spurs 4-1 at home. What? You know, that doesn't surprise me because it's Spurs, and Spurs are not great. But 4-1 at home. Oh, this boy. He knows how to score. <laughs> Karim is a very good wonder kid. He knows how to score. Right. They run 4-1 at home. And then lost to Spurs 3-1, but got through just... Then beat Roma 3-0 at home as well. So it looked like a team that's good at home. 
I'm just going to say this. I'm actually, I've got Peer Tech too. Yeah, geez. That's not a bad little side, you know. Um, all I'm going to say is because we got them in a neutral ground in a final, I would say that suits us instead of them having to play them, instead of having to play them at home. In the end, look, it is what it is. I'm very happy with that indeed. And look, we have gone and found ourselves in the final. Honestly, thought it was Salzburg in the other semi. I do apologise. Um, but in the end, we have got a episode to, of goodness to come up. We've got Leipzig and Salzburg, the two Red Bull boys, in both the Cyberpunk Pocklin and Europa League final. I will see you then for that episode. Episode 11, can we do the treble? I like to think we could. And then see us get into the Champions League season. Season three, with full of momentum and free trophies under our belt. From Damon and everybody else here, links down below. And thank you yet again for checking out the VVB Rebuild. Here with Dortmund. I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.